Welcome to the Supplement Engineer Podcast. My name is Robert Schnetzky. Today, I'm joined by my partner in crime on Thursdays here at the podcast, Mr. Justin Hall of Supplement Snoop. Welcome, my friend. What's up, brother? That's a nice t-shirt you're rocking today. This is a damn, damn sexy t-shirt, so thank you for uh, sending this out. Definitely appreciate it. It's super comfortable, fits me well, me and my uh, medium size that I am. That's okay, man. That's okay. We got got other sizes, too. I know, like, just putting that on sort of... Um, there's a correlation with testosterone levels and things like that. So, size, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. If you wear it like three days in a row, then that's when the real like benefits start kicking in. So. Especially if you don't wash it in between those three days, it just exponentially. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't wash it for sure. No, <laughs> but then, uh, I got, we got these hoodies and now people keep asking me about hoodies. I'm like, shit. Cause, um, my wife's, well, my mother-in-law, she made Prady and I these hoodies, um, for my birthday. Pretty came in last year for my birthday, like surprised me, came into town and stuff like that. And she she gave us these for gifts. Now people are like, well, where can I get one? I'm like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> I didn't really think about that. So we'll get you a hoodie too when we make them. Hell yeah, man. That's, I'm always down for a hoodie, especially this week. I don't know what the hell happened, but like the entire Southeast got blanketed in this obnoxious cold front. And it has been like in the 30s here in Texas for four straight days in a row and wet and windy. So it's kind of miserable. And if it's going to be this cold, I wish it was snowing because otherwise this, this level of cold and moisture is just pointless. I think it was because, um, the shift in global domination of Alabama to LSU. (laughs) I I think it threw, I think it threw the axis of the earth off a little bit. I think Nick Saban's ego getting knocked down a peg sort of threw the whole weight of, of the entire planet off. So yeah, hell has frozen over. We broke the eight year streak and I'm sorry. I know my brother listens to this podcast and uh, he's an Alabama grad. So this time of year, you know, he's not really considered a member of the family. We kind of temporarily disown him for a few months until football season is over. And then we'll welcome Mm -hmm. back with open arms when uh, football season is over. So I was going to save my ranting and gloating and, obnoxiousness for the end of the podcast so oh, i no, completely uh, turned him now. off but uh damn that was a good game to watch especially the first half it was very un alabama like and very the, t- the team did not look like a Saban coach team but hey we we capitalized on their mistakes built up a sizable lead and uh we fended them off very well in the second half every time they did a punch we had a counter punch form uh clyde mm-hmm. edwards hilaire was a freaking beast of a running back in that game he's like five foot mm-hmm. nothing and he just mauled over him uh, sure he's, did. he's a man child and Joe Burrow cemented his, uh, I think status as the Heisman winner for this season with that victory in Tuscaloosa over Alabama. Didn't show really, uh, any signs of slacking whatsoever. I agree. And cause like I said, it was actually, I was watching Miami and Louisville, which it was weird enough because Miami's offense, just Louisville could not stop them. I mean, they were just at will scoring on them. So they had like 35 points at the half, which mm-hmm. I haven't seen in probably, I don't know over 10 years against a halfway decent opponent. So right before the half, uh, I turned over to the Alabama LSU game and caught the end of the first half. And it was, wasn't it like 19 to 13 or something like that? And then within two minutes, it was 33 to 13 or some shit like that. I was like, yeah. Oh, and you're right. Like even uh, Lila was like, who is this freaking running back for <laughs> LSU? Like the dude is tiny and just a maniac. So it was a good game. We ended up, we caught the end of the second or the first half and then Miami sort of pulled away from Louisville. So then I switched over um, and caught like the end of the game. And you're exactly right. Like Alabama, although you're right, LSU made it a little more interesting than they should have yep. <laughs> at the end there. Mm-hmm. Um, anytime Alabama would do something, LSU would answer right back. So it was, it was good to see. It was, um, that's what uh, separates the good teams, man. Cause college football is just nuts. You know, Mm-hmm. You could be up by 40 at halftime and it doesn't matter. And uh, it's just whether you can answer that, 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 that counter punch that you know is coming. So that was cool, man. They, they impressed the hell out of me for sure. Yeah, definitely an impressive victory. I'm glad uh, Coach O got the win. Uh, we were listening to a lot of the post-game coverage afterwards, especially like the local Baton Rouge guys that do the, their broadcasts after the game. And they, they uh, described Alabama's comeback in the second half perfectly. They said they likened it to – a serial killer in horror movies that just when you think they're dead, they keep coming back and they keep coming back. And finally, you know, at the end you have to blow their head off with a shotgun or something. And they finally go away until a yep. sequel comes back. So I'm praying to God that Alabama suffers another loss this season. Like maybe they lose to Auburn or something. 
because I don't want them to like backdoor into the top four and us have to play them the first game of the playoffs and have to go against them. I really don't want to do that because playing a team for the second time in a college football season is, is not a sure thing at all. So I don't want to have to play Florida again. Damn sure I don't want to have to play Alabama again. So we need Georgia to keep winning out and uh, us to win out. Yeah, that top four is going to get pretty interesting. Yes, um, if Clemson keeps winning, Ohio State keep winning, like expected, then then where are you at here? Well, Penn State going down mm-hmm. wasn't that surprising, but it, that kind of helped a little bit clear it up. But right. I think a one-loss SEC, SEC team is going to get in, you know what I mean, if it comes down to it. So mm-hmm. you're right, man. Alabama's definitely not out of it. Yeah, yeah it's going to be interesting. So, yeah, we'll, we'll maybe – Save a little bit more college football talk for the end of uh, the podcast for right now. Let's move on to uh, actually some supplement-related talk. So the uh, big lead story for this week is that the guys at Olympus Lifestyle, say what you will about the, the branding efforts. We've always said that the formulas are solid. Uh, Moby, the brand owner, reached out to Justin and I this week and offered us an exclusive preview of their upcoming productivity formula called Grind, I believe is what the name of it is. Uh, so it's a productivity slash nootropic formula, and they said, hey, would you guys like to get the exclusive debut of this formula? And we said, yes, we would very much like that opportunity. So thank you to Moby and the rest of the team at Olympus for allowing us this opportunity and uh, let us uh, explain to you the profile, man. So uh, you've seen it. Uh, do you want to do the rundown of the ingredients and then we can kind of break down the formula from there? I don't think I brought – I don't think I have the ingredient list in front of me. Okay. You uh, want to do it? Yeah, I've got it pulled up right here. So – It's going to be a one or two scoop serving size. So you're looking at 30, 15 servings for the product. Um, So I'll go down with the full serving is going to be. So this is what the amount is going to be per two scoops. So you've got a full B complex in there. You've also got some magnesium as a bisglycinate chelate form. So one of the better, highly more bioavailable forms of magnesium. So that's nice to see. Um, Starting off with the main actives in here, we've got two grams of vegan L-glycine. We've got 1.6 grams of new level, which is basically the nootropic form of nitrosagene. Uh, we've yep. got one gram of L-taurine. We've got 750 milligrams of acetyl L-carnitine, 480 milligrams of Vertiva, which is going to be this uh, complex of ginkgo biloba and phosphatidylserine. Uh, we've got 300 milligrams of caffeine anhydrous, 260 milligrams of dynamine, which is the 40%. So that's going to yield 104 milligrams of actual dynamine. We've got 250 milligrams of cognizant citicoline and 20 milligrams of huperzia serrata extract standardized to 1% huperzine. So that's going to give us 200 micrograms of huperzine A. So that is a loaded formula. Uh, Obviously, it's going to be high on the energy and focus side. Um, Obviously meant to help you grind through your day, accomplish stuff, get a lot of shit done, be very productive. So what are your thoughts on this? Yeah. Um, well, first things first, too. I, I think people have always known, like if you've heard me, especially from the very beginning, always been a big fan of Olympus Labs. I know that they seem to have a lot of controversy and stuff online. They A lot of people get very polarized about them. I'm like, they've always just delivered on really good formulas. Not only that, but they, they take a lot of chances, in which I always like and you know a lot of times in the supplement industry you just don't see that so i've always been big fans of them so it's like when he asked us to do this it's like of course you know i i think moby is a good guy i think he's super passionate about what he does which is really nice so i am a little biased towards them i guess in a way because it's like i've always just thought they do good things but um there's a couple things about this formula that i think certain people are going to gra- go towards okay the new level and you're going to see the the Vertiva. Vertiva, that's how you pronounce that? that yeah, that's what the way I'm, I'm, I'm pronouncing it. I mean, they didn't, have a, they didn't have a little phonetic spelling next to it or pronunciation. Um, so I'm going to just say Vertiva. It might be Vertiva, but I'll, I'll say Vertiva. So, but it's interesting that it leads off with two grams of glycine. Glycine is just like one of the, one of the cooler amino acids that have like different sort of functions. It's kind of like one of those in that category where, you know, it can be, it's a calming, right? It's a calming type ingredient sort of for recovery and stuff like that. But whenever you're talking about, like, if you're looking for something like a a nootropic formula, sometimes you have that calming effect that gives you the tunnel vision, you know, whether you're sort of like stressing or things like that. So they sort of have this interesting combination of fast acting, 
creatine-like source in dynamine, you have caffeine in hydrous, and then you have some things in there that sort of, I like acetyl L-carnitine, we know that's good. The, the cool thing about this too is, this is not a typical bodybuilding.com formula. You don't really see that many patented and trademarked ingredients going to, to bodybuilding.com. You just haven't seen it a whole lot. I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but there's a lot of expensive ingredients in this formula. Um, so then I know we've had several conversations sort of um, offline, online, stuff like that about a new level where new level seems to be, and when I say this, it's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm like, okay, what is what is different about this than nitrosogene? To me, it's like, okay, we're going to have a nitrosogene competitor. Nitrosogene has been around for a long time. It's like, so I don't know. I know what they sort of say. They say there's a little bit and it's like somehow geared towards gamers. But to me, whether that's true or not actually really doesn't matter. Um, what is true is nitrosogene is... If you're talking about arginine supplementation, this is one of those forms that does work. And we know how important arginine is in the body, whether it's whether you want to say it's for gamers or whether you want to say it's for pumps during your workout. Blood flow is always a good thing. So especially if you if you can talk about brain blood flow. So whether it's different than nitrosogene or not doesn't really ultimately matter. I know that the marketing says it is and things like that. We're not really Sure, it's the same sort of type of idea, but whether it's different or not doesn't really matter. It's mm -hmm. still a good ingredient. I think it's um, a good addition here. I know that was we've we've had conversations about that ingredient. It's the the Vertiva or Vita, Vertiva. That's the new kid here because then you have Cognizant, which I know both you and I both like Cognizant a yep. lot. Um, dynamine. A lot of people love Dynamine. Mm -hmm. um, so you have a lot of. I don't not typical ingredients, but things we're familiar with. Yeah. But the Vertiva, that's the one that they sent us some studies. Mm -hmm. It was like studied in <clears throat> which is good. I know the studies work like kind of a low amount of people, but at least they were they were like trained athletes, right? They were like um volleyball players, like they said elite volleyball players. Yeah, but the first remember, study was uh ten elite volleyball players and then the second one was in, I've got both studies here, so let me pull up this other one right now. And it's, I think it said it started with 19, and then uh, ultimately it finished with 19 people. So the second study had 10 male and 18 female participants. They were looking for two different things, right? One was the cognitive boosting effects, and the other was performance. Right? Correct. Yep. So it was interesting. I mean, it was... Um... <sighs> it's another one of those ingredients where... We've had a lot of these, it seems like, lately where we know about the ingredients within it. So yeah. it's like the studies that, that seem to be happening a little bit lately is there's just not much, right? And it, it didn't show like crazy, crazy like benefits or anything like that. But it this is in athletically trained people where a lot of companies and a lot of studies will use an extreme you know, like a diabetic or someone with cognitive decline to sort of try and prove that they have this massive um, effect. Yeah. Whereas I can appreciate when companies want to use trained people or young people and things like that, people that are already healthy. And if you can even show a little bit of an improvement there, I think that that carries a lot of weight. Um, and we can talk about how that compares to, okay, if we're going to take someone in some sort of cognitive decline or or um, poor health circumstances, you can. It's easier to move that needle, you know, for that group of people. So I thought this was interesting. There's a lot of things we can sort of take in consideration with, with these studies. Small sample size, maybe not huge, huge differences, but differences nonetheless in trained, young, healthy people, which was interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a few notes on the earlier ingredients, and I'll I'll dig a little bit deeper into the. Uh... Vertiva ingredient because I, I dug through the studies fairly heavily and there's some key things I wanted to point out for the listeners that may not be familiar with the ingredient. So glycine, like you mentioned, it, it does have some inhibitory properties because it, you know, uh, affects GABA levels in the brain, but it also potentiates and modulates the NMDA receptor. So it can kind of function as a dual ingredient. Um, so giving some calming, but maybe some excitatory stuff as well. It works, you know, a place for both teams. 
uh, yep. which is kind of like theanine in that way, in that it, it also potentiates GABA, but it also affects dopamine release too. So that's kind of a, an interesting spin on that. Taurine is another kind of multifaceted ingredient. It does have some GABAergic properties, but uh, it also enhances cellular hydration. So there's, there's some cognitive benefits there. Obviously, the benefits from new level are going to be enhanced oxygenation and blood flow to the brain, enhanced nutrient delivery, so that should help with focus, concentration, and all that. Um, I'd like to see the Alcar dose just a smidge higher, maybe like one gram mm -hmm. or two grams, possibly, you know, you know, one and one and a half, one, two grams, somewhere in that range. I would like that. Uh, caffeine. I understand this is just a personal pet peeve. This isn't a, a knock against the product at all. Um, 300 milligrams is a bit more than I would like to see in a productivity formula that's approaching like pre-workout doses in a, in a nootropic and productivity thing. I'd prefer somewhere in the ballpark of like a hundred to, to 200. That's, that's kind of where my, my jam is for those. Uh, the dynamine, you know, that's a solid dose. That's fine. That, that's a really good ingredient. And I've mm -hmm. actually found a product where I don't actually hate dynamine in. I took another scoop of Genius Consciousness uh, yesterday or the day before, and that's got caffeine and dynamine in it. And that is the first time I've taken dynamine in a product, and it doesn't bottom me out and make me feel tired. But it's probably because either the caffeine to dynamine ratio or there's no teacrine in it either. So that might be another benefit as well. Anyway, all right, and then the 250 milligrams of Cognizant is the full dose. Love that dose. 200 micrograms of Fuprazine, that's, you know, a high dose, but a very good dose of that. So that's, we're good, all good there. Um, to the Vertiva blend. So one of the studies compared the absorption of, or the, the effects of Vertiva against, you know, just a blank placebo, so a nothing in this. And when you dig into the results, one of the things that I found interesting is that in some of the subjects, it actually didn't have any impact on cortisol at all. And their, actually, their cortisol levels actually went up during right. training, yeah. mm -hmm. which I found was weird. And then on the week that they weren't taking it, their cortisol levels were actually lower following training. And so I can put these tables up in, on the Supplement Engineer blog or uh, you know somewhere else where I can post them to Instagram or something if you guys want to see it, or just let me know and I'll email you the studies because Moby was kind enough to send those over. So this one, I would say it wasn't a super statistically significant benefit in the first one in the 10 subjects because you just have a very small sample size. For some people it worked, for some people it didn't. So what I think they're trying to do possibly with the Vertiva ingredient is to modulate some of the stress because, you know, if you have high cortisol levels, you feel stressed out, your ability to concentrate and perform cognitively or even physically is going to be impaired. So I think the combination of Vertiva, Glycine, and Taurine are, are trying to do, you know, bring you down and level you off a little bit. Um, the second study compared uh, Vertiva against another just plain placebo against regular ginkgo biloba because that's the whole point behind complex and ginkgo biloba with phosphatidylserine is that ginkgo biloba on itself the uh the turpentine the terpenoids and everything that are in there aren't highly bioavailable they're rapidly metabolized in the body so by complexing it in a phospholipid with phosphatidylserine it's supposed to you know prolong the enhance the absorption of it and let it stay around a little bit longer and interestingly, they also complexed it and compared it to a combination of ginkgo biloba and phosphatidylcholine. So within this study, um, ginkgo biloba, the ginkgo biloba only treatment led to higher blood concentrations of a terpenoid in ginkgo biloba called bilobalide. Um, and so the three main actives that is in Vertiva and all ginkgo biloba extracts are going to be bilobalide, ginkgo lide A, and ginkgo lide B. So bilobalide is an antagonist of GABA-A and C receptors, it's, so it's a negative allosteric modulator, and it's also been shown to have some neuroprotective benefits. Ginkolide A binds to glycine and blocks glycine receptors. Ginkobolide B is a negative modulator of GABA-A receptors. Um, the interesting thing is that the ginkgo biloba only supplement increased plasma levels of bilobalide higher than either the ginkgo biloba phosphatidylcholine uh, complex or the Vertiva blend. That was interesting. Now, rest for the other ones for ginkgo below for ginkgo lide A, um, the ginkgo biloba and the Vertiva blend were evenly matched um, on the initial at the three hour post mark, and then for ginkgo lide B, again the phosphatidylcholine form was the worst of the three, and the at the three hour mark, ginkgo biloba and ginkgo biloba plus phosphatidylserine were evenly matched, and then at the six hour mark, there's a bigger difference. Um, interestingly, in the battery of cognitive tests that they ran, 
Vertiva didn't perform as well on some of the things. It wasn't just blanket slate that Vertiva outperformed everything. So when they were assessing digital vigilance task and word recognition, the Vertiva blend did was led to worse performances. So Ginkgo biloba and the Ginkgo biloba phosphatidylcholine complexes outperformed Vertiva. Um, now in some of the other ones like the speed at the attention, the accuracy of attention, they didn't find any significant difference among the three treatments and then in a few other measures the Vertiva one um, actually was the top dog in that one. So, and then it, the other last interesting thing is that they were comparing all of these as 120 milligram uh, dose, since that was the lowest one to find benefit of any uh, ginkgo biloba extract, just a plain one, in the mm -hmm. studies. So what I would have liked to have seen, I guess, in an ideal scenario, so I like that they compared it to a, a few different forms of ginkgo biloba, but I want to see a full dose of ginkgo biloba by itself compared to vertiva to see how big of a difference is there you know are we getting substantially better benefit from this complex version yeah, i mean because the, these two small trials it's not enough i think for me to be overly wowed by that ingredient um I'd, I'd like to see either bigger sample sizes or more data on it um because ginkgo biloba by itself had a pretty long track record in the industry just as a supplement for brain health and cognitive performance and all of that so I like that they're bringing this ingredient into the industry. So that's a, that's props to OL for introducing yet another ingredient. Do I think it is going to be substantially better than a regular ginkgo biloba supplement? I'm I'm not overly convinced based on the data I've seen to this point. But overall, yeah. I mean, I like the uh, the profile is is pretty solid um, with the the modulators that they've got in there and glycine taurine and ginkgo biloba. I wonder if you could accomplish the same thing, maybe by just putting in like 200 milligrams of theanine or you know, is there something else that maybe we're not, I'm not seeing, or is this, you know, a, a little bit more intricate route to accomplish the same end goal, which is trying to keep you a little bit more even keeled when they hit you with that higher dose of caffeine? Well, I think then that's like one thing you hit on in there, that I think was interesting. And then if you uh, think about it in other contexts that we've seen ingredients like this, we don't know, right, the ginkgo biloba ratio to phosphatidylserine, right? Mm -hmm. And we, we know that like phosphatidylserine is a really cool ingredient, um, yeah. showing a lot of benefits, but you need, I mean, that's a pretty low dose. If right. this, this, um, in two scoops, you're getting four times what that study actually was using. So it's like, yeah. how do we, <laughs> how do we really extrapolate that? It's yeah. like, um, so I think, I really can't say anything different, I think, than what you already said. It's like, it's, I like using ginkgo biloba. I like using phosphatidylserine. I like putting them together. Yeah. Um, and then also you have all this other stuff going on within that formula too, where it's like, okay, how does that play a role? Mm -hmm. So I wasn't overwhelmed by the studies either. Like you said, it, some of it was, but at the same time, it's not like they're, saying here's this formula it's vertiva and some caffeine and, and you're gonna it's gonna be this mind-blowing experience it's like there's a lot of right. ingredients that are in this formula so it's not like yeah. they're not like they're hinging their all their bets on that this is going to do something but i think correct anytime you can use if we can pull apart some of these you know patent ingredients and trademark stuff if you can pull them apart and look at the ingredients individually you know that they're both Decent ingredients. Phosphatidylserine is one yeah. of my favorite ingredients. I love it. Um, so if you just were to list all the ingredients, take away the um, patented forms, take away the symbols and stuff like that, you have a nice list of ingredients within this formula. So yeah, f 15 servings, That kind of that's kind of a bummer, I think, for people. I didn't see the price, mm -hmm. but um, I don't know, man. I just think that there's some things that are – that I'm hesitant about, but there's some really cool things kind of going on here. So mm -hmm. I would really like to try it. Yeah, like, yeah I, I would really too. Like to I love the the B complex in there because that's those are heavily involved in energy production and the formation of neurotransmitters and all of that. So that's a good bonus. And there's not enough nootropics, I think, that include B complexes in there. Um, but good you point. know, one thing's for certain: this thing is definitely going to light you up cognitively. I mean, the the doses of all of like the the really like neural charging ingredients like cognizant, huperzine. Dynamine, caffeine, those are all super top-notch doses. Um, the other, the modulators and like the, the state, I'm going to call them the modulators and the stabilizers ingredients. Um, 
it'll be interesting to see how those interact and, and tame the the surge of energy and what kind of focus you get on the back end of this. Is this more going to be should you start off with you know just a single scoop of this and see how it treats you, or should you just go you know full bore out the gate if you're more of a highly caffeinated person? Because um, right. when you start messing around with nootropics and you've got caffeine in there to potentiate everything, uh, you could be in for a wild ride. Yeah, and you know, man, it's like I hate to even say this because I don't want it to be like sound like a cop out, but there are so many times where you see formulas like this, and a lot of it goes back to these guys testing these products. Mm -hmm. um, they, to me, have always done a lot of testing. They, you yeah. know, and so it's like, did they? You know, sometimes products will come out and they're just sort of copy and pasted dosages and based on what other people use that ingredient as, right? Yeah. And then also when you put them together, they don't have that same desired effect you're going for. So yeah. I hate to say like I want to have more faith in this product too because I know that they, those guys really test um, their products very thoroughly. Mm -hmm. But it's just just me. I want to uh, I want to try this one. I think it's pretty cool. I think. Um, yeah. You know what? You and I don't get don't get overwhelmed and wowed by trademark ingredients and patent ingredients and stuff like that, and um, for good reason. But that doesn't mean that they're not beneficial. So I like it. I think it's it's cool, especially for a bodybuilding.com um, mm -hmm. offering. I think it's I think it's cool, man. I, I like it. Like I said, there's there's things that when I look at it, I go, I would like to see this. I would like to see that. But then when you Put all this stuff together. We yeah. just know how sometimes that can just mm -hmm. change change the whole ball game when you have choline sources and you have things that are supposed to light you up and then keep you down and then sort of keep you on the rails. It's like, dude, you never know. <laughs> you yeah. never know how that's going to play out. But it also seems to me like, you know, a lot of people talk about, well, should I use nootropics and stuff every day? There's ingredients in here that I like for daily use. Um, yeah, ginkgo biloba is one of those that has to be, you know, is best taken several days in a row. Um, a lot of the mushrooms, like lion's mane, is best taken several days in a row. Uh, other ones you should probably cycle a little bit more frequently, but yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, so I think it's cool, man. I think, like I said, they, they – and that's it too. It's like, okay, I give them a sort of a Olympus Labs a lifestyle bump mm -hmm. because yeah. they just have – always, I don't want to say always, but they've always had pretty good products and, and things that they like to do. So it's like I, that if I was on the fence about the formula, the fact that it's from them would probably steer me to try it because I just, I think that they, they do some cool stuff over there. And I think this, this could be really, I'm intrigued. This could be really fun. Like this could be a really fun product. Yeah. I'm and the, the two flavors on it are uh, Red Bull flavor from what I've heard from Moby. And this is something I haven't seen enough of, I don't think, from Nootropics formulas. It's going to be a cappuccino flavor. So we don't really see a whole lot of coffee or like mocha flavored Nootropic powders mm. out there. And I think that it lends itself perfectly to like a coffee replacement or like a breakfast beverage on the side. Um, so I'm really excited to hopefully get a chance to try both of these. Um, so yeah, thank you to uh, Moby for the opportunity for us to kind of unveil the product and to you know take it apart piece by piece like we did. And I know we have a lot of other... Uh, brand owners that listen to the podcast so maybe this is something that we can start doing a little bit more of if they want to let us be the first to release some of these things and give it you know an honest uh just kind of run through and say hey this is our opinion on it you know we're not wildly speculating about anything we're just giving honest opinions on the ingredients and our experiences with them um and break down the formulas and all that so yeah it's cool and hopefully we can do this some more you know, man, and it's what what I constantly – the reason why I hate and, – and one other th cool thing I'll say about this too is mm -hmm. um, Moby, this is like his wheelhouse. Like yeah. he's, he's, a, he's a gamer, right? He, he's he's into the whole that, yeah. biohacking race. So this is in his wheelhouse. I like when people make products that they would want to use themselves, right? Yeah. And way too much, man. And you, I mean, you know this. We go through this every week. These like gamer supplements suck. They're, they're like, they're shitty nootropics. That's like really what they are. They're, yep. they're like better than an energy drink, but worse than the worst nootropic formula out there. So it's like, I want that standard from gamers. These people that are just going like your, your standards need to be higher than energy drinks. Correct. Um, so this is kind of a cool 
I don't want to say cool. I don't want to say kind of. It's it's a, a significant upgrade from anything you would ever see in an energy drink. I mean, it's you would never see an energy drink even in this ballpark. So it's good to see. I like to see. Um, I guess that sort of fits in with what they do. A lot of times they, they get into a certain space and they want to push outside a little yeah. bit. So I think, I think it's cool, man. I hope other people see formula like this and they, and they start to get in the lab and start, uh, you know, trying to come up with something like it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. So thanks again, Moby. We appreciate it, man. Hopefully yeah. you uh, enjoyed our analysis of it. We did the product justice. Um, and hopefully we can do this more with some other companies and new products and, uh, you know, our, I know our boy at uh, Morphogen is doing a shit ton, which we'll cover in a little bit. Um, but right now, we'll move on to some product reviews that Justin and I have been trying out this week. So what are some of the uh, the new things that you've gotten over the past week, buddy? Um, man, I got a lot of stuff. I got uh, – I think we both got Bare Knuckle. Right? Yes. Who again, Bare Knuckle? You want, to talk about, you want to talk about that one first? Yeah, that works for me. Go ahead and uh, give me your thoughts on it. Which flavor did uh, – Robbie, send you. I have jungle juice. Yep, that's the one I got too. What were your thoughts on the uh, the flavor? Well, I guess I should be talking a while about the flavor. Yeah, I, I honestly like I <laughs> I don't even know I don't even know how I would describe the flavor. It's like a it's like a mixed berry ish type of the one thing too. Like what I like is they put right on the top of it says warning clumps give pumps i like, love that sticker, sticker on the top yeah <laughs> and it is as like a very gummy um substance inside and that right away like for me i get excited when i see stuff yeah. like that because i'm like oh i was there. like you know that's the good stuff um huge dose of glycerol and they actually use glyco shot mm-hmm. i don't know if you looked at that the, the glyco shot that was i went on their website it doesn't say anything about what it is. It just says 65% glycerol, which that's what Hydromax and Glycer Pump and stuff are also. But it, it actually, that I saw, it didn't say that the other 35% was silica or anything like that. So all I saw was the 65% glycerol. So it's like going to give you, you know, roughly three grams of, of actual glycerol. Yeah. But you have one thing that I did notice about this that I. I don't think it's really a good product to stack with Hooligan um, because both are massively dosed in not only citrulline but betaine. Um, yeah. There's three grams of betaine in both. I think six grams of betaine is probably going to be a little bit too much for people, um, especially with the the glycerol and the citrulline. So yeah. I don't think they're – they're really designed to be stacked very well unless you were to go like half. But then even if you're going like half dosages, I would want to get the full dose of Fitnox. I would want to get 100 milligrams of S7 like what's in here mm-hmm. in bare knuckle. So that was the only thing that I could say potentially – I don't want to say it's negative. I don't know if his idea was designed two products that would stack together well. I wanted to stack bare knuckle and hooligan. <laughs> But then I sort of was looking at it. I was like, you know what? I don't think that's a really good idea. But yeah. um, I use this standalone, um, and I th- I like it, man. I think Fitnox is a is a really cool ingredient. It was it was good. It was just good. I like, it was no surprise to me. Like it was in the least surprising news when I got that product. I was a big fan of it. Yeah, yeah. I like it. The flavor. I got a chance to try the sample pack or the sample flavor of it when we were up for the Apollon seminar back at the end of October. And you're, you're right. It's like a strawberry, cherry, grape kind of taste or something with it a little back end of pineapple on it. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, if you I mean, obviously, if anybody has been to college, has probably had some kind of, you know, jungle juice mixed up in a bathtub where it's eight different kinds of fruit juice and then Everclear and you get, you know, you have a couple <laughs> red Solo cups of it and you're ended up upside down by the end of the night. Um but it's, yeah, it's a pretty good uh, replication. Robbie said, he said, I got the flavor from the manufacturing house. He said, I couldn't pinpoint it. And he said, I didn't know what the hell it, it, to call it. So he said, we just called it jungle juice. He said, it, you know, it works. Let's just call it I that. love that guy. Yeah. I, it, it's, he's exactly right. He's not, because uh, when I drank it, I'm like, I hope he doesn't ask me to describe the flavor to him. I was like, because I don't have a fucking clue what it tastes like. It's yeah. good. Like, it's not like it's a bad flavor. It's just, it's super, like, dark red. Yeah. Um, and then when you drink it, it's just there's a lot 
sort of going on. Yeah. So, but I would say I would put it more like uh, I've said the same things about um, that Natural Body Ink um, Intrablast. It's sort of all these different flavors, but those are more like a tropical mm-hmm. type flavors. This one's more of to me is like a a dark berry type flavor i think like what you mentioned like cherry and like maybe like raspberry or blueberry or something like that this is more like dark berries to me than Mm -hmm. than like tropical flavor but yeah i think the performance was you know i hate to just shrug my shoulders and say it's like good because that's what we just come to expect from him but i think it's a really kick-ass product um i and i don't like using just stim free products so Mm -hmm. um this is not my style but yeah I liked it standalone and then I've been sort of tinkering with different pre-workouts to stack with it because like I said, I just don't think hooligan is really a great stack with it. Mm -hmm. If I could make one comment that, but I don't know if that was even his goal. I don't know that probably not. So I'm sure he knows that. Right. Uh, You could try stacking with like six caps of overtime. That might work. <laughs> I still, I still haven't done six caps of overtime, <laughs> or maybe um, four caps, and you know, three or four caps, and you'll be, uh, you'll be good with that. That could, that could stack with it, possibly. I tell you what, that's a good idea. Yeah, there you go. Because you just don't, right? You don't want to say that a negative about a stim-free pre-workout is there's too much citrulline, or there's too much betaine, there's too much glycerol. Like, right. I don't want to make it seem like that. It's just I know people love to stack products. I love oh, to yeah. stack products and. Mm-hmm. Um, I just probably would steer clear of stacking this one. It probably would be a little bit too much betaine and citrulline and stuff like that. But like I said, I don't think that he made these to stack. Doesn't seem to be. No, it's. it's I mean, I, I you could you raised the point. You could do half scoop of each. Um, but at that point, some of the ingredients you you're not getting a full dose of, even if you combine them. Obviously, you'd still get a full dose of citrulline and betaine in there. Um, but some of the other ones like Fitnox, you wouldn't be. And I think Elevate TPs in in regular hooligan so you'd only be getting half dose of that um i will say I, the flavor on this batch is much better because the the strawberry mango or strawberry whatever it was of the previous bare knuckle was a mm-hmm. little too acidic and i like super tart pre-workouts but this one was just it was too much from the citrulline malate that was in there i think and all the other uh, tart agents that they had in there this one is much more balanced from a flavor point of view Performance is top notch, you know, very good cell hydration, volumization, muscle pumps, all that good stuff. Performance was really solid on it. I liked it. Um, so, I mean, but what else do you expect? You can you can tell how it's going to perform based on the uh, the formula. Yeah, so. it delivers, and that's the thing too. Like, I'm not half dosing hooligan, right? Because yeah, I'm I don't I'm taking hooligan because <laughs> I want the full dose of hooligan. <laughs> so. I just that's just my style. So for yeah. people out there, you can absolutely half dose hooligan if you want. I'm just not going to. Yeah. I think uh, I talked to our friend Ben from uh, um, Ben Kane. Okay. He yeah. he said he uh, he did scoop and a half hooligan the other day. I'm sure that like, lit boy up. I was like, you're, I was like, I'm so proud of you. Man. <laughs> Well, then again, okay, I don't want to make a disclaimer. I know some of the things that we say on here, like, get really, like, uh, people really, really get out of hand with it. I, I don't want to say I'm out there encouraging people to take a gram of, of caffeine, okay? It's just a joke. And Ben's, like, 270, so. Yeah, he he's the iron giant. We, we refer to him that lovingly for a reason, that the man is ginormous. Mm-hmm. So, he would, he, yeah, so, moving on. Ben Kane, interesting segue. We'll now move on to some new, a live review. And you've already tried these two proteins. I'm going to do a live review of the Nutribio Chocolate Peanut Butter Bliss. So I've got mm-hmm. their whey protein isolate and then their regular whey protein. So which one should I do first? I would do the isolate. And then that's a something that I talked about when I got these two products. Yeah, there's like a little bit different taste. But you know people – so the classic way is the concentrate and the isolate is the isolate, of course. There is really not much of a difference between the two products. I know people get really weird about proteins and concentrates and stuff like that, but if you look at the the macro breakdown and all that stuff, man, it's, yeah. it's not much different. Although they they do taste different to me, um, just a little bit. But let's let's not get too crazy about that. Yeah, I, try, I keep trying to temper those expectations. Yeah, that there is such a, and we've addressed this before on the podcast that there's a whole bunch of marketing jargon thrown around there that isolates are so much more pure and better than concentrates or and then from the you know the concentrate pro people that 
isolates are degraded by the, the processing and concentrate just so much better because they retain the immune boosting immunoglobulins and all that. So, but when you get down to the NASS details, here's the profile on the classic way: 130 calories, two grams of fat, three grams of carbs, 25 grams of protein. Here are the facts on the isolate: 110 calories, so only 20 calories difference, two grams of carbohydrates and 25 grams of protein, zero fat. So you're losing two grams of fat and one gram of carbohydrate between the two. That is nothing. That's a drop in the bottom of a freaking bucket. So here is the first one mixed up in a nice little glass using my little rapid mixer, courtesy of the guys at Beaumont Nutrition, so I don't have to get out a shaker for this. And that's with water? Yes, water only. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was good. I think that was good. Ooh. Yeah, it reminds me of a, like a peanut butter pie kind of thing. The chocolate, I don't get much of a chocolate. I guess a little bit on the back end. It's kind of like a biting into uh, a Reese's peanut butter cup is the best way I would describe it. The, the texture is a little thin, but it's an isolate, so what do you expect from that? It's, and both of these are in six ounces of water like the uh, tubs advise. Yeah, cause, and that's why I say it too is because – to me, especially like when you try, I'll, I'll let you try the, the other one first. Okay, I'm going to get my little whoop. I'll do this. And for those well, of you that's a little preview too because you, you have that podcast with Bomar people um, coming out pretty soon, right? Yes, I recorded that with them yesterday. Super nice people, very knowledgeable. Both of them? Yeah, we did with both of them. That's cool. Yeah, it was. Uh, they play off each other well. They're, they're a power couple in the, uh, the supplement industry. Uh, so we talked about, you know, the founding of the company, working together as a husband and wife duo, what's coming up next year. So that will debut uh, Tuesday the 26th. So that is the Tuesday of Thanksgiving week. Next week's interview is with Stephen Hines, the founder of Victory Labs and Titan uh, Way. And so the, the thick shakes that we talked about, the Titan thick shake. So he sent me four different proteins. I'm going to be sending that to you as well. I'm going to send you some scoops because they've got a unicorn. Uh, milkshake flavor and so i remember seeing that one yeah you and i'll, I'll do a live sampling of that like this so okay yeah uh, i'm in i'm right. in so now you got the classic way coming right hmm. two totally different flavors this one is much thicker i like much thicker i like the thickness of this infinitely better just as a protein that's why i like concentrates a lot and I think a lot is overblown about the, the GI distress. Yeah, if you're using like WPC30 or WPC4050. Right. Yeah, you might, yeah. even people it's that handle bio. very well um, might have some issues with it. But by and large, if you're doing a WPC80, there's not going to be that much lactose in there. I mean, hell, there's only two grams or uh, three grams of carbohydrates in this whole thing. So you're not getting right. grams and grams and grams upon of lactose. Right. So you know, chill the fuck out with that for a second. Um, the peanut butter flavor is different. The richness, I really like this one more. Um, let's see. Yeah, it's kind of why I brought it up too, why I wanted to put a disclaimer out there because yeah. to me, mm -hmm. like I like the isolate a lot. You're right. It's but the it is that that classic way is like creamy peanut butter, man. Yeah. And I'm like, look, yeah. if you're missing out on the classic way version because you're worried about a carb or a gram of fat, I'm like, you should rethink your stance on this stuff. Yeah. Because the, f the extra flavor for minimal, minimal macros for me is 100% worth it with this stuff. Oh, and yeah. I get it. Like if people are like, okay, if you want the isolate, I think the isolate is plenty good. It's a good flavor. But if you don't care, get the classic way, 100%. Right. And if you want to get your, you know, get your, have something, you're scared blown up about something else. The way isolate only has 5.3 grams of naturally occurring BCAAs while the way has 6 grams of naturally occurring BCA, so you're that much more anabolic with regular whey protein than I Wait a minute, there's there's BCAs in protein? Despite what you've heard, there actually are. There are BCAs naturally occurring and, and EAAs too. And so then they put it on their label. You know, someone asked me the other day about, um, yeah, here, here I go, I can't keep my mouth shut. So someone asked me a question the other day about MRE, and you know how I like talking about that product. Oh yeah, it's your favorite. So someone told me, they said, well, there's no amino acid breakdown on the label. And I said, well, because if there's not enough BCAs and stuff like that in there, I'm sure that would be a problem. Uh, that's just speculation, right? And he said that he reached out to them and they didn't return any of his correspondence. I was like, you know, 
the the amount of amino acids that are in there is it's an important thing. Um, it doesn't take them all quality companies for the most part that I've seen put it on there. So yeah. there's no reason for it not to be on there. So I just that's a little PSA, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I know that it says typical amino acid profile. I wonder how often that is updated because I mean, are you obviously you're going to have minor variations, I guess, on a protein content of each different cow that gets milked. There might be a slight difference. So you're not going to have a blanket. This is the way it always is. Um, so I wonder if they have to update those fairly frequently for the labels, or is there some way that the, the way manufacturers can standardize it, or they have a special way of blending all the different ways that they get from the different cows, and then they, they get these specific whey fractions in there to give this amino acid profile? Well, because what we're running into, I think, where that that question was coming from that was interesting is, so now you have, like, collagen protein and stuff like that, and mm -hmm. we know that, like, the hydrolyzed collagen can be a lot cheaper and stuff than that, and you see whey has gotten really expensive and in shorter supply, according to, you know, people. So if you're, if you're willing to – now, if you're going to switch and start putting different forms of protein in there and you're going to use collagen, you're still going to yield – protein but it, the amino acid contents can be significantly different you're going to be a lot less bcas and stuff like that which is mm -hmm. what you're hoping for to be it's just you know it's just something to keep an eye on i would say moving forward as consumers yeah. that we don't see people taking liberties with that because it'll save them some money um right because how are you going to differentiate yourself right now with protein i mean there's a million of them out there so it's like well okay we can increase the, we know the profit margins on them aren't very good, especially with the crazy flavors that we're seeing. So mm -hmm. where would a company save some money? Uh, just maybe using some cheaper forms of protein, <laughs> but that's just, you know, just my thoughts. Just my thoughts. A discussion for another day. Um, so you like the classic way better? Yeah. Yeah. I don't find there's as much of a chocolate flavor to the classic way. It's more of like a rich peanut butter. Um, very thick. Yeah. Nice and thick for uh, a concentrate. Very full on the peanut butter flavor. It's like a roasty peanut butter almost. Um, roasted smooth peanut butter. The isolate's got a little bit more tinge of chocolate to it. Uh, so if you're going if you're more like the Reese's flavor, go for the isolate. But if you want like pow right in the kisser peanut butter, go for the whey. Yeah, and I think so. like, I mean, people know that, that listen to my stuff and that's what I like anyway. I hate thin proteins. Yeah, I do too. So I'm biased. So just take that with a grain of salt too. If you like thin stuff, I mean, you'll love the isolate. But yeah, I'm going. I'm going classic way all day long. Yeah, I'd prefer whey concentrates or uh, go with a blend of like a whey casein, and that would mm -hmm. be that'd be my jam. And that's what I tried. Uh, Robbie's protein. I think I maybe I talked about that already before. His Which protein one did break. you try? The the fifty fifty one, the chocolate peanut butter, the peanut it's butter just, cookie one. Yeah, it's um. Well, they've got Dutch chocolate. They've got a vanilla and peanut butter cookie. Yeah, this is peanut butter cookie. Yeah. Um, half isolate, half casein. Yep. I loved it. Delicious. Love it. I love it's it. Super yeah. good. Oh, and I had the Leica Pro apple cobbler. Ooh, how was that? Isolate. Holy shit. Good stuff. That is good. Yeah. That. That is an impressive isolate protein. Um, I mixed it with, with vanilla almond milk. Oh, man. Vanilla almond milk and like a pro apple cobbler. But I know he's only doing a limited run of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know, he doesn't have very many left, I don't think. Um, but it is – it's awesome. It was a really – and that, you know, it was funny. That brings up another point. I, I was having this discussion with someone. They're always like, Justin, can you – can you recommend a good protein? And I'm like, <laughs> I have like four apple flavored proteins that I could not tell you which one to buy. Like, because they're all really good. I yeah. said, I can't even recommend an apple protein to people because there's so many good ones. So how could I possibly, I said, just keep that in perspective, everyone. Like there's, we are in the golden age of whey protein yep. and just enjoy it. Just stop being such babies about the flavors and freaking out and, asking everyone else what their opinion is man if something sounds good and you're buying from a quality company right now you're probably going to like the protein yeah are you a fan of inclusions in the protein so the little cookie bits or marshmallows or cookie pieces cereal pieces or anything or not as much it's funny because i was actually just and someone that that listens to this podcast will appreciate that i was literally just we just had this conversation as you and i were coming onto the air mm -hmm. 
um, because I tried that protein creations. I said, to be honest with you, I don't want, I don't want pieces in my protein. I was like, I'm simple. I just like, um, a good chocolate or a good vanilla, uh, whey protein. And mm -hmm. I, I appreciate the effort, but like if I buy, if I'm going to buy a protein, I'm not going to buy ones with inclusions. Yeah. It's just not really, I don't appreciate it that much. You know what I mean? Yeah. If someone wants to send me some, I mean, I enjoy it, but I, like that was my point. This um, protein creations, there's like whole fruit loops in this protein. And I was like, I don't really want that. Yeah. Like I get it's cool and it's a cool idea, but mm -hmm. I would just eat a bowl of Fruit Loops, I guess. But. Yeah, I, I would think it would. I don't. If I'm drinking a protein shake after a workout or something, I don't want to be having to chew my protein shake while I'm doing it because I'm, I'm really mm -hmm. not hungry right after a workout. And if I just want to drink something, it's either going to be like a some kind of post workout supplement or nothing, or I'll just go eat some solid food. Or if I have a protein shake because I know I'm not going to eat for a while, then I want to just get it in and get it down. So I'll, I'll do a blend or, you know, a concentrate or whatever I have lying around, whatever I'm in the mood for. Usually something chocolate or chocolate peanut butter is what I tend to gravitate towards. I don't want to have to be chewing my protein. I think it could benefit if you're doing like a protein cereal and milk, it works fine in that capacity. If you want to mix it into yogurt, mix it into oatmeal. Sure. That's really cool. But a lot of the times with these inclusions, they end up falling to the bottom of the shaker. And so if you have to stick your hand down to the bottom of the shaker or get a spoon or something and get them all out mm -hmm. of there because you'd end up drinking all the liquid and all the solids fall out, or at least in the, the ones I've tried, the, a lot of the, the chunks fall to the bottom. They're not able to stay in suspension. Yep, and a, a couple of points about that because, you know, we were talking about Olympus Labs earlier. They sent me their proteins that are all – they're all very good. Mm -hmm. um, but the fruity cereal one that they did, that's how I feel when I drink it, like – it, it, but now when I'm saying it, I'm not, I'm sort of complaining, but there's a lot of people out there that this is going to be exactly what you want, right? Yeah. When you drink it, there's so many inclusions in there. It is, it's like eating, it's like eating your protein shake. And I'm kind of like, eh, you know, I could do without that. But there's a lot of people that really like it, but they did a really good job where it doesn't all go to the bottom. Mm -hmm. It's very consistent. Like every sip you're taking, you're getting a lot of inclusions in there so olympus uh lifestyle i still struggling with that um olympus lifestyle did a really good job with their protein i think sweet all right man let's uh for those that don't follow ben hartman on instagram at morphogen ben oh boy you might want to because your boy is uh gearing up for a massive release of products the uh all of 2020 it's going to be the the takeover of morphogen nutrition so I've got in this little like hour long rant he went on last night while he was driving around going to pick up his, his kiddos. Uh, he listed a bunch of products that are going to be released, you know, between Q1 of 2020 down all the way to Q3. Um, do you have any? That he didn't even talk about it. He didn't even talk about his his bar on there. I don't think did he? No, the bar wasn't mentioned at least in the yeah. the, the snippets I was listening to. Well, uh, he's got a protein bar coming too. Yeah. When does do you know when that releases? So. He told me last night because I remember a while back he had hoped for like a January ish release. Yeah. But he said there's still he said there's still probably a couple months away from really getting going in the manufacturing end of it. So he's like he's like it's gonna be a while. It look it seems to me like and what'll be interesting too is Ben's from Columbus. Mm-hmm. The Arnold is in Columbus at the beginning of March, and that seems to be around the time when he's uh gonna release seems to be he talked about a lot of stuff man i couldn't even yeah like i just he probably got about 75 replies because i'm like holy shit what the fuck what are you doing are you insane like holy shit i, I can't wait <laughs> like, so i was messaging him like after every story he finished last night while uh on there i was watching i basically had a reaction to it so nice but yeah let's start off with uh so alphagen is getting that's his uh Flagship product is pre-workout. He, which he said, is the, the the best one for his money on the market. Obviously, he formulated it. He knows what he's doing as a formulator. Um, you know, Justin's used it several times. I haven't had the privilege of using it yet, but all good things from his end and from your end, obviously, from what I take. Um, they've got a new flavor coming out: peach rings. Thoughts on that? Do you like peach rings? Um. Yes, and his um, synthogen peach rings mm -hmm. is really really good so i would expect and then i'll tie that together he did say that 
they were working on a peach pineapple volugen. Yep. So he he means to be able to mix those two. I think he was saying. Correct. Which I think yeah. that's that's cool because that was something I made a comment about the arms race nutrition stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, when you mix the two flavors, their pre and their pump, it gets better. It's like the flavor were meant to be sort of stacked. And I was like, hey man, that's that's cool. I appreciate that. Yeah, exactly. I would agree. It's. I, yeah, it shows that a company is willing to put in that little extra bit of effort if they either do the exact same flavors of their pre and their thing or taking it one step further and you find flavors that are synergistic with each other. So doing like a strawberry flavored pre-workout and a stem pre-workout and like a mango or a pineapple stem free pre-workout, then you get strawberry mango, which is delicious, you know, as a frozen margarita combination. I'm, I'm a fan of that that combination. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> yeah. Um one thing that he's bringing to market that he mentioned that I haven't seen, to my knowledge, I, I mean, we've seen organ defender products and organ support and health products and all that, but we have either nephrogen or morpho-renal coming out as well, which is a kidney health formula. Yeah, and that's going to be, a, that was one of those things I'm like, well, I don't know shit about kidney supplements, you know what I mean? Because that's a tough one to crack. There's a lot of companies that claim kidney benefits and stuff like that and i just it, it's not a popular topic to cover so yeah. i'm curious i know that he said he's uncovered some ingredients and things like that that they're interesting and what was he talking about now that you say that what ingredient was he oh beetroot, beetroot. yeah yeah beetroot that was a really interesting take he had on beetroot i thought that was pretty cool like yeah. um if you want to you probably wrote it down if you want to elaborate on it yeah, he's basically saying that a lot of people say, well, you should take beetroot because it's high in nitrates and you do that. And so obviously beetroot as a vegetable and beetroot juice does have a high percentage of nitrates in it. And you'll get some cardiovascular benefits in regards to that and enhance nitric oxide production, blood flow, all that good stuff. The problem with beetroot powder is that beetroot powder, the vast majority that you find in supplements is like 1% standardized to nitrates. So you need 10, 20, 30 grams of beetroot powder in order to get even any kind of meaningful amount of nitrates in there. The problem with that is that beetroot also has compounds in it like phytates and uh, oxalates, which can contribute to the development of kidney stone formation since everything passes through the kidneys and gets filtered out that way. If you're megadose and all this beetroot stuff, you could potentially line yourself up for some kidney stone. So he's saying, you know, basically if you want to get the benefits of beetroot juice, either eat some whole beets or drink some beetroot juice. Don't fuck around with putting beetroot powder in a supplement because it's there's no point to it. Like the 500 milligrams to 2 grams that you're getting in all of these products that put it in the market, it's just there for, you know, sex appeal on the label. It's not actually conferring any ergogenic properties. Right, and he was saying, he's like, now why would I put an ingredient in my kidney formula that could create kidney stones? Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was an interesting take on it. I thought his whole um, breakdown of everything was was really... Um, yeah, he, it wasn't from a marketing standpoint. It was from a very scientific, um, I don't want to say you could tell he was sort of like, I want to create something like what I like about him and other people that, that create products like he does, they create products for themselves. They want to solve some sort of purpose, whether it's for themselves or a family member or something like that. So they ultimately create these products not because they just want to sell them, but because they actually want to solve a problem. So they look at the ingredients, not necessarily in a cost effective or what will get people's attention. You know, like if people just see, you know, a certain dosage of citrulline, a certain dosage of this, like it's just what people associate. Oh, that'll give me benefits. Even if it's not exactly true. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, like you said, beetroot, it's sexy on a label, but is it really helping us? So it's like, you could just see that he was thinking about it from how can I help people that have this issue um, best and looking at it critically over the typical cheaper ingredients that he might be able to use and saying, I don't want to use that because I don't think that is appropriate. So it was kind of, it was refreshing. Yeah, very, very. Ben is one of the best formulators and one of the sharpest guys in the industry. We've had the privilege of having him on the show. You talk to him quite frequently. He's a member of the Supplements New Facebook group. So, I mean, it's, it's great being able to have these kind of conversations and have access to these people like him and Moody and a lot of the other really, really super sharp, smart guys in the industry. Yeah, I just feel bad. Like, I'm always talking good about him. I just 
I'm like, I, I feel like I have to say something negative at some point just to like, just to like keep his head, you know, in the game and keep him, keep him humble. Yeah. So I always, I always break his balls about having all that feeding in his pre-workout. <laughs> that's, that's the only thing I can say. It's like the only thing I got on him. I was like, why you put all that feeding? He's like, man, Alpha Gin's the best. I was like, it's got too much feeding in you, man. He's like, hey, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you, man. <laughs> Um, also think a few other products that Ben mentioned were Morpho pump. So I'm guessing that's going to be another stim free pump pre-workout now. He's got value gen. So I'm wondering how Morpho pump is going to be different. Now he mentioned a few things on there. He's, he mentioned something about having a uh, epimedium in there, which is going to be standardized to 60% Icarin, which is going to act as a PD five inhibitor. So that's going to mm-hmm. act to like all of the, uh, the dick pills on the market, like Cialis, Viagra, they all work by acting as a PDE five inhibitor, which is going to increase blood flow. So, Morpho pump, you could probably use that as a stem free pre workout or as like a sexual health support supplement or a nighttime performance supplement, you know, if you've got some uh, action coming up late night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, he's got some cool plans for that one because it's capsule based too, which that's I think that's what okay. he said he was going to try. He wanted to do capsule based, so there is some different ingredients in there. Um, yeah, I, I don't, you know, he, we talked about it. It is very cool. It's very ambitious um, formula. He showed me a couple of things that were. What I like about Ben too is he'll he'll say to me, he's like, "Hey man, I'm I'm thinking about this product." He's like, "But I have to see if it's possible first. I have to see if it's humanly possible to make this." Yeah. <laughs> not whether we can afford it or not. Whether it's humanly possible to make this product. So I always got to appreciate that. He's got some cool plans for that pump product that it is not redundant to Volugen because Volugen is such a killer product. Yeah. Um, it's not redundant and it should be, it should be interesting. That one. And, uh, we talking about Maxigen. He uh, wants to do a, cause I always break his balls about feening. So I'm gonna take mm-hmm. credit for, for the fact that he wants to do a high stem pre-workout. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, one other note on Morphin, he said it's going to have nitrates in it or an ingredient that significantly increases nitrate uh, levels in the body. So if it's a capsule based product, like you said, I'm inclined to believe that he may not be going with, uh, one of the nitrates and maybe something like Fitnox he might be going with or nitro rocket or super spinach or something like that. Or maybe he is going with one of the NO3 T things that just, if he's going to give you 12 capsules to get, you know, two and a half or three grams (laughs) worth of, uh, nitrates in there. Yeah. He, um, well, you know him, man. He's, uh, yeah. We'll see. Yep, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Sure. Yeah. Uh, also, he mentioned Theragen, which is going to be their powdered fat burner. So they said that's going to be Q1 of 2020, which is going to capitalize on all the, the weight loss resolution years out there that want to drop weight as soon as the new year hits. He actually, right, because he, that one's pretty much done. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he said, right, it was going to roll out in January. I think he said he would send me a sample of it maybe this weekend. So, because he said they they finally had the flavor. Right. That's his issue too, is because he put so much crazy shit in his formulas. It's like, yeah. I mean, I'm not big on flavors, but you still need to make it where someone's not gonna throw up. Like, correct. When they, drink, yeah. when they drink it, so it seems like that's what he's been fine tuning a lot of is um the flavors. Yeah. Uh, last one, he's got some commodity products coming out. So a creatine complex, which is going to be 90 serve, beta alanine and erotic acid complex, which is going to be a 90 serving one. Uh, morpho joint, which is going to be a complementary joint support formula. It's going to be capsule based. So you could stack it with ortho joint if you wanted to. Um, yeah. What else? He's also working which on. Which is interesting because orthogen. Yeah. Orthogen is so loaded that I'm like, well, what are you going to, did you, uh, did you see his thermogen? The, it's for pre-cardio, he was saying. Did yeah. you see that formula? No, I've not seen that formula yet. <laughs> he mentioned it's going to be loaded in the way he's attacking it, uh, which yeah. so it's got cocoa butyrol in it, and I'm assuming some kind of some carnitine, maybe some GBB in there. It has like all the cocoa butyrol in it. <laughs> <laughs> it has like, I think he said 400 milligrams of cocoa butyrol. Oh. But that's not even, that's not even it. Like, you'll see the formula, you'll be like, like every time he, he like showed it to me, I was like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> so I've heard good things from uh, the people that he has um, helped him test and Bay stuff like that. So I, yeah. I think he did say he was going to send me something. So Sweet. I'll be extra nice to him this week. Very nice. Uh, last but not least, his Adaptogen product, which I don't know how in the world he was able to get the Adaptogen name for the product. 
because it, that seems like just a common thing and somebody would have used it by now. But if, if he's able to, then shit, that's awesome. But he's in there, he's going to include cordyceps, uh, holy basil, ubiquinol, phosphatidylcholine, neurofactor, which is an ingredient you and I both really like, um, and mm-hmm. bovine adrenal glandular uh, tissue. Well, that'll be interesting too, because um, he, what he does also is, so many times we see these ingredients, and they're cool, like in theory, right? Mm-hmm. But they're never like dosed at anything that the body's going to be able to do much. And I see, like, he'll show me his list of ingredients, and I see the ingredients. I'm like, damn, 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 you know. And then I look over the dosages, and I'm like, what the hell is that? Like, <laughs> He's like, I, I just, he goes, I just want to do dosages that no one's ever seen before because that's, you know, sometimes that's what's holding back some of these ingredients from, from being beneficial is people just won't use enough of it, you know, right. to, to be in there. Well, that's definitely not his, uh, you saw like his macrogen product, like he uses Spectra. I always knock Spectra because I was like, well, yeah. what's 50 milligrams, 50 milligrams of Spectra going to do? Right. But he has 750 fucking milligrams in his Spectra. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, where do you come up with that number? <laughs> it's the study dose, man. He goes, digs through all the studies and finds uh, what doses they're using in there and puts it in there to the max. So He's like, well, let me do the study dose times 15, and then I know it'll work. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. The over-engineering, it's perfect. <laughs> all right, man. So are you able to roll for a little bit longer, or should we cap it here? Um, I should probably cap it. Okay unfortunately you got things to do um, places to be yeah i don't think um so i we can't imagine recap some uh, stack 3d stuff or not but i feel like we've covered a lot of ground today you know what we've talked about a lot of positive stuff today yeah. and let's let's keep it rolling i know i'm gonna i'm gonna show a little bit of bias um because we don't see we don't see a lot of exciting stuff on stack and i'm not even gonna say like that this is like super exciting but mm-hmm. let's talk about there's stim free because there's also a nootropic that iron brothers we both know mark from iron brothers yeah. very well um mark is one of the good guys within the industry he makes his products to sort of go on amazon so they're going to have a certain look and a certain feel to them and a certain price point yeah um he's from he's canada a, but we'll forgive that for now <laughs> he's from canada um he's got a, a nootropic called prodigy that actually i got the sample it's it's cool and well, we'll, maybe we'll talk about that later. Um, he's got an entropic, and then he has a stim-free fat burner. Stim-free fat burners are just brutal. Like, yeah, it's like how do you burn fat without increasing your energy and crushing your appetite? So it seems like a lot of this stuff is sort of geared towards perhaps <clears> – <throat> manipulating fuel substrates or getting some sort of efficiency in there but also just more mood elevation and more um you know things like that just to get you off your ass a little bit you know so he's got a yeah he's got the stim free one on stacked and then he's got um prodigy so i think mark is um he's growing quick good. man i remember when they first came on the scene with uh their pre-workout and uh it was an ass kicker then the, the v2 I'm, i work actually use that today as my stim pre-workout today for uh legs part due of the week and uh nice. it's good shit man i like it yeah because it's not overly heavy on pumps which is good because i tend to work with a little bit higher rep range on legs like 10 to 15 for most of my stuff because mm-hmm. the, if i go like six six to eight it just it, my knees hurt for the next couple of days um and then also, like right behind uh, the Iron Brothers one, this is interesting. And actually, I didn't confirm this with Chris from Inspired, but you know they've been talking about that Devastate BBD version for a long time, and ultimately they decided not to release it here. Yeah. Um, if this is the same one that he sent me samples of, this one blew my ass away. Really? Like, this this one was my favorite pre-workout experience of this entire year i would say was the samples of that but i don't know if this is the exact same formula he, they're only releasing it in australia because that devastate worldwide wide wide mm-hmm. one is going everywhere but this bbd one is going strictly to australia i don't know that this is exactly what because in the stacked article 
I got to try it, and I know Shane got to try it. Mm-hmm. And in here, he says, we actually got to try a few samples of the pre-workout back in April. And he said, and like all the devastates before, devastated BBD delivers a powerful and intense combination of effects. That is an understatement. <laughs> that is an understatement. I actually used, I used devastate BBD within a week of using Anarchy Assassin. Mm-hmm. And BBD to me was just as strong, if not stronger, but not as not as uncomfortable as Assassin. Like, gotcha. like if you took all the good parts of Assassin and then took out some of the bad stuff, mm-hmm. that was that was be my experience with at least with the samples. So I'm a little jealous of the um, Australians. Australians here. Yeah, but I said I mentioned the stack comment. I said. You guys are going to need stuff like this because you got to fight those like man-eating spiders that you have over there. <laughs> uh, what are your thoughts on uh, sex cocktail? Oh yeah, that's the. Um, <laughs> well, you know what? I never saw. I never saw a formula because um, we know Joe Donnelly over there and the yeah. AML people. They're all about science, and if you argue anything that he does he just freaks out like a psychopath but doesn't mean he's not a smart guy and he's actually very intelligent and they do make some interesting formulas some cool formulas but i was not able to find an actual formula for this one no it's not up on the site yet just the the write-up mentions that uh it's going to have horny goat weed b vitamins niacin so horny goat weed we just talked about that with uh Morphogen Ben's product, so it's going to have 60% icarin, which this is so the same standardization. Uh, so I know PDE5 inhibitor will promote blood flow to all the regions, including the nether regions of the body. Six grams of citrulline to extra nitric oxide support. Uh, vitamin C and folic acid uh, to enhance the vasodilation properties of L-citrulline. So there's no formula released yet. I might need to text Steve over there steve blackman over at aml who does all the formulations and runs the company and say steve can you shoot me a profile on this so I, we can uh, talk about it more but what are your just your thoughts yeah, overall as a uh a sexual health promoting supplement because we all see you know bullshit natural testosterone boosters and uh stress anti-anxiety formulas what do you think about supplements that are trying to target uh what viagra and cialis can do but from a more natural standpoint i I, I like it. And the only thing is, is, you know, when it gets into stuff like this, we're like, okay, what about, what about long-term use? We don't know about long-term use, but when I've used, I've used things that have a carry in, in short, you know, the short term. And I, I think it's awesome. Like this seems like it's going to be a simple formula, but I think that's, that's not a bad thing. Right. You have effective ingredients. Like I said, AML usually uses great dosages Right. Um, they obviously know what they're doing over there. Um, so I'm curious. I think I think it'll probably work pretty well. Um, I like it. I, I just I don't know how I feel about it. Like I mean, I don't think anybody really does. Like is is using this all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, can be a good thing. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well, if they are using it all the time, they must be newlyweds. <laughs> right. I guess that's a good, <laughs> yeah, it's a good problem to have. <laughs> All right. Well, oh, um, I'm gonna get rolling here. Let's. Uh, I think we we talked about all positive stuff basically this week, man. I think that's. Uh, yeah. We probably needed that after last week. We did. I mean, it was it was a good weekend for me. The LSU emerged victorious and broke the streak, Miami. got the monkey off our back. Miami uh, qualified for a bowl. Yep. All good things, man. It's gonna be a, a good weekend. Who do y'all play this weekend? They are on a bye. Bye week. Okay. All right. So we and are. They play, they play the Butch Davis, the Butch Davis led FIU, whatever the hell they are, Panthers. Uh, our old coach, our old coach, yep. Butch Davis. Never. And when he was at North Carolina, we couldn't beat him. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those scrappy guys. Yep. He was always good. A good recruiter, man. Look back at those those teams that Miami had early two thousands. That was, those were all his his guys. I mean, that dude could recruit his ass off. Yep. Sweet man, all right, brother. Well, thank you again for fun banter as always. And uh, this will be up on Fridays as usual. And uh, have a great weekend, man. We'll uh, talk and bullshit as we always do offline. All right, I'll probably talk to you in about fifteen minutes. <laughs> all right, man. Bye.
Szépen.